Good morning, church. Good morning. It's a lovely day, wonderful day again, uh, as we come together to worship God in spirit and in truth, and to see all your happy uh, faces. Glory to God. Okay. Thank you for the prayer, um, Brother Ryan and uh, Brother Pete. Appreciate the prayer, and I hope you will uh, you will continue praying for a good friend of mine, Dave uh, Vigo, whose father just passed away um, a few days ago, and he's now traveling uh, here from California, traveling back to the Philippines today uh, to attend to their uh, uh, to the wake of their father. So I hope you would continue. Praying for them. Okay. We'll continue with our happy cities. Again, uh, blessed morning. Happy morning to everybody and all, all, all those in our Zoom platform. A blessed morning to everybody. Okay. Now, okay. They say that, uh, you know, when Michael Jackson was rehearsing for an upcoming event, he was giving his 100% all the time. So it was like he was doing the concert already while rehearsing. Now, what you see in the concert, it's actually, they say, that's how he was during rehearsal. So he was a kind of a perfectionist, as they say. Now, if you are one of the crew or one of the dancers uh, in his crew, you will feel ashamed um, if you will not give your best during rehearsal because Michael Jackson was giving his best, right, 100%. And I remember um, way, way back when I was about to take my uh, promotion for a higher, you know, a higher belt in Taekwondo. Now, you won't believe that I am a Taekwondo practitioner. <laughs> that didn't look like. <laughs> now, our sensei, our master asked this question, you know, when, when we're having that, uh, that promotion. And this, uh, I will never forget. Now, he asked us this question, okay? True or false? You know, practice makes perfect. And we all say, yeah, it's true. It's true. Practice makes perfect. Now, majority of us will say that is true. All right? That is true. Now, somehow, it is true. The practice makes perfect. Now, what you practice, you will actually perfect that. All right? Now, here's the interesting part, now, which I want all of us to pay attention to and learn from this. Now, our sensei, during his lifetime of practicing the discipline of Taekwondo, that during practice, he saw that most students, let's say they would kick 45. There was a kick called 45 in Taekwondo. You know, the student will just throw their feet, you know, on the air because it's just practice. It's just rehearsal, you know. Now, our sensei said that if you continue to practice the wrong way and with the wrong form, what will you perfect? You will perfect the wrong way and the wrong form. And he concluded that, you know, it says practice or perfect practice makes perfect. Make sense? Makes sense. And again, this totally makes sense, right? Now, in reality, what you continuously do in life, you will perfect that. No doubt. You will be good at that. If you continue to practice being negative in life, then you have perfected the craft of negativity. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> so that's why, you know, when I look at people and see their behavior, I'm not surprised why they are like that. Because, you know, that is what they practice in their whole life. It becomes their habit and it becomes part of their life. And there's a one uh, good uh, quote 
Watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. And watch your actions, they become your habits. Then watch your habits, they become your character. And watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Now, what you practice, you actually become. All right? So what you practice, you will become. Now, why am I saying this? You know, people are truly unhappy because we don't practice happiness. People don't know how to practice happiness in their life. Now, we don't practice it right. We do it wrong. Okay. Now, our number four rule in how to be happy is practice happiness. You practice happiness all the time, and you will be happy. According to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11, according to the gospel of the glory of the blessed God, which I have been entrusted. Now, I want you to notice the word blessed. The word blessed there in the New Testament, it is makario. Remember the word makario? We mentioned that a few weeks ago. You know, I have a friend in the Philippines named Makario, right? And that word means happy. So we are created by a happy, by a joyful God. The glory of the happy God. Blessed God. A joyful God. And therefore, joy is very much a part of us because we are created by a happy God. And therefore, joy, happiness is inherent. To all of us. If God is a joyful God, therefore, we must be a joyful human beings. Okay, remember that. We just don't practice how to be happy the right way. We just don't practice happiness the right way. Now, as, as I have shown, as I have shown you in the past weeks, God wants you to be happy. Okay? God wants us to be joyful. And it's a command to rejoice in the Lord. So therefore, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, our life, your life, must manifest the joy in you. Okay. Now let me ask you this. When people look at you, when your friends look at you, okay, what do they see? Do they see a joyful, fulfilled man and woman of God? Or do they see a unhappy person? Do they see a miserable person in you? Now, how can you convince, my dear brothers and sisters, your friends to follow Christ if all they see in you is unhappiness? If you are ungrateful in life, how can you convince someone to be like you? And we say, brother, sister, I'm a Christian. And yet what they see in you is negativity. What they see in you is ungrateful, is an ungrateful individual. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Now, people will know you if you are a truly follower of Jesus Christ, but by looking at your life. Okay? They will just look at you and they will see you if you are a truly follower of Christ by observing your behavior. And your behavior, the manifestation that you have is your fruit. Remember, by their fruits, you will know them. You manifest what you are inside because it is who you are and what you practice for the longest time. Right? Again, if people saw in you a, happy, a unhappy person, an ungrateful person, now people will look at you and say to you, if this is how a Christian looks like and behave, then I don't want to be like you. I don't want to be like you. You see? But if we manifest a joyful, a happy Christian, a fulfilled man and woman of God, then people will envy you. Because despite of what's happening in the world, you are happy. 
You know how to smile. You know how to laugh. Even in the midst of pandemic. Now people will wonder, why is this guy so happy? What's in him? And there you go. You have an opportunity to tell that person, you know what's in me? Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ. That's why, that's why I am happy. Again, rejoice in the Lord. You see again, your outward actions, okay? Your fruits is a manifestation of what kind of person you are. Now, so how do you practice happiness? Now, here's a question first that I want all of us to answer. All of you got their piece of paper <laughs> that I handed out a while ago? Can you bring that out? All right. Can you bring that out? Now, truthfully, I would like all of us to answer, even in, in those in our Zoom. I want all of you to answer this question truthfully. Don't lie. Don't lie. <laughs> Don't lie. Don't lie to yourself. <laughs> now, you will, all, you will only see this. Uh, no, nobody can see your answer. You will take home. <laughs> you will take that home. All right? So here's the question. Here's the question. What is the first thing that you do in the morning when you wake up? Well, of course, aside from going to the bathroom, relieving yourself. No. Okay? Don't, don't write that. So for the longest time until today, what is the first thing that you do in the morning when you wake up? Okay. I'll give you two seconds and one hour. All right. Now, again, going back to the question, how do you practice happiness? Okay. Start your day with a prayer. Start your day with a prayer. Okay. One way of practicing happiness, start your day with a prayer. The best time of the day, the best time of the day to talk to God with a grateful heart is in the morning when you wake up. Okay. Nowadays, it's easy to forget to thank God in the busyness and distractions of this world. With so many things going on, with work and everything, we are so busy, right? We are so distracted. Now, again, what is the first thing nowadays people do when they wake up? Now, don't change your answers. <laughs> don't change your answers, all right? Now, mostly, I've done the research, and I did some, you know, Google. <laughs> the first thing most people do in the morning when they wake up is they grab their cell phones, <laughs> you see, someone is laughing. <laughs> uh -huh. Someone is relating. Good. Good. That is good. All right. So people would grab their cell phones, look at their social media, what's going on, look at their uh, email account in their inboxes, you know, and people, when they wake up, again, some people cook for breakfast, you know, that's what they do. All right? That's what they do. That's who they are. Okay? Now, I have a friend one time. He told me, you know, Brother Mike, I have no time. I have no time in the morning. You know, when I wake up, I'm always in a hurry. I have no time to pray. I have no time to do this. I'm always in a hurry. You know, I told him, why not wake up earlier than usual? Yeah? Why not wake up five minutes or ten minutes earlier than the usual time that you wake up in the morning. Then you have your quiet time with God. Right? So you won't have excuse. Now, I often say this, and I think you heard me say this before. <laughs> every gissing is a blessing. Gissing is a Tagalog word for wake up. So every gissing is a blessing. Every day you wake up is a blessing. Okay? What it means is that well, just to name a few, number one, God gives you another happy moment in life. Every day you wake up, God gives you that. Number two, God gives you another opportunity to become a better you. That is, ultimately, you will use that opportunity to be closer to God. And number three, 
God answered your prayer of another day of life. Every night, every night, I pray to God, Lord, can you lend me my life tomorrow? That's my prayer every night. Part of my prayer. And every morning, I thank God for answering my prayer. Right? So, every morning is a blessing from God. Our prayer is a manifestation of our joyfulness in the Lord. When we give thanks to Him in the morning, it shows our gratitude to Him for the life He has given you for another day. In Psalm chapter 7, verse 17, I will give to the Lord the thanks due to His righteousness. Now, what do you teach your children to say when they receive something from someone? Or Kennedy, what do you teach your children when they receive something from someone? Say thank you, right? Or is there anything else that you, you, you tell your children to say to someone? Some more. Some more. <laughs> you know, we say thank you, right? Right? So we teach our children to say thank you. And we should remember that as well. We should remember that as well and remind ourselves every morning to give thanks to God for blessing us another life. Right? Amen? Can you tell the person beside you, give thanks to God? Can you tell the person beside you, give thanks to God? Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Thanks to God. Amen. Now, look at yourself. Can you tell yourself, can you tell yourself, give thanks to God? Mike, give thanks to God. Help yourself. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. You know why? If we teach our children to be thankful, we should be teaching ourselves to be thankful as well to God every morning. Amen. Amen. Now, do you know that God is happy when you recognize His righteousness to you? Just like when you recognize the goodness of someone to you. It makes them happy when you say thank you. That's why the Bible said, I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness. And that is due to God because he is righteous. He is good to you. So you give the proper thanks to the Lord. Psalm 147, 11, but he takes pleasure in those who honor him. Now, do you see that? Do you see that? God takes pleasure. God is happy. He is happy when you honor him. He is delighted when you put your reverence to him. And the Bible is clear. The Bible is clear. One way of honoring God is, then I will praise God, God's name with singing, and I will honor him with what? With thanksgiving. We honor God by thanking him. We honor God by giving him what is due to him. And that is by thanking the Lord, bringing our thankfulness to him in prayer. Apostle Paul practiced praying. Paul was praying to God with joy because his joy was in the Lord. And it was a joy for him to pray to the Lord every time because God knew, because he knew that it will honor God every time he offered a thanksgiving to God. That's why in Philippians chapter 1, verse 4, part of our scripture reading, in every prayer for all of you, I always pray with what? With joy. So when you pray to God, be joyful, my dear brothers and sisters and friends. Be joyful because you are giving thanks to the Lord. Because you are glorifying, you are honoring God in your prayer. Mark chapter 1, verse 35 Early in the morning, well before sunrise, Jesus rose and went to a deserted place where he could be alone in prayer. You know, Jesus as well practiced praying. He practiced praying all his life. It was his practice to wake up very early in the morning and go to a secluded place or a quiet place where he could commune with God, to his Father. Wherein he could thank the Lord. Thank his heavenly father for all that his father did to him. Okay. 
Now, it must be a, a habit, our habit, to pray to God, to give thanks to God, and bring our request to God every morning. As Psalm puts it in Psalm chapter 5, verse 3, each morning you listen to my prayer as I bring my request to you and wait for your reply. You know, when we pray to God in the morning, when we thank Him in the morning and give our request to Him, you know what? We recognize God's sovereignty. Mm -hmm. It means that you recognize God's authority over you. You recognize God's power over you. When you give your request to Him every day, every morning, every noontime, every day or every hour, every time of the day, when you give your request to Him, you are being dependent on God, which means you need Him and you recognize His absolute power over you, whatever the outcome of your request is. Be it no, be it wait, or be it yes. You will accept whatever God's answer is because God is sovereign. And that is His sovereignty. Whenever we ask God to protect us in our daily life, you know, before going out, we pray to God to protect us. Whenever we ask God to protect us in our daily life, we recognize His absolute control over the course of our life. And whatever outcome life unfolds before us, we submit to it because that is God's sovereignty. Just like Jesus Christ. He prayed to God the Father and submitted to whatever life unfolded before Him because He was 100% human being. And he submitted to God's sovereignty when he was still on earth. Now, on the side note, numerous studies conducted by researchers shows that praying, praying increases the levels of dopamine in your brain. And dopamine is the hormone that is associated with happiness. So when you pray, it makes you happy. And another research showed that prayers provide peace of mind. And when you have peace of mind, you have happiness. Right? Amen. So I encourage all of you to pray all the time. The Bible said pray without ceasing. So that is why prayerful is a powerful tool to be happy. Now. Again, I would like to encourage everybody to be prayerful. If you are already, then glory to God. You know, start your day with a quiet time with God. Okay, now, let us break for a while. Let us break for a while. Because you are so serious now. Let us break for a while. Okay? Question. Which Bible character had no parents? Joshua, son of Nun. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, now, an optimist sees a glass half full. A pessimist sees a glass half empty. How does a chemist see a glass? The chemist sees half full of liquid and half full of air. Makes sense. Now, another one. How do we know Peter was a rich fisherman? How do we know that Peter was a rich fisherman? Answer, by his net income. All right? Okay. One more? One, one more? One more? <laughs> Alex, I... <laughs> okay, one more. Just one more. What did the classmate say? Okay. What did the classmate say when asked why they kept walking next to the same person at school? Why? Why do they walk with the same classmate at school? Because I was said told, I was told I'm supposed to walk by faith. Yeah, so they're walking with faith all the time. All right. So what's the relevance of that in our lesson? 
What's the relevance? Second, to practice happiness, smile. You laugh. No, because people don't know how to smile. Because people don't know how to laugh. How can you be happy? People are, you know, they are telling jokes, but you are like, Yeah, right? Okay. So when there's something funny, you know, laugh. Learn to laugh. Learn to smile. Now, they say to put your forward, best foot forward, right? Now, I say, put your best smile forward. Right? You see, you're all smiling. You're all smiling. They say when you smile, you should show, show your teeth. <laughs> By the way, I would like to thank everybody for, for this week. Uh, I've been visiting some of the brethren. Thank you for opening your doors. And thank you for having that mandatory selfies with me. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Jesse's uh, giggling on that side. <laughs> you know, thank you very much for that. Now, you know, um, you can't go wrong with a simple smile. You can brighten someone's day with a smile. I remember this one story. The one person, he was doing his usual walk, all right, in the morning. And then when he passed by someone, he just gave that person a smile. A smile, and then said, good morning. And then all of a sudden, after a few seconds, he felt a touch on his shoulder. And when he looked, uh, the person that he greeted touched him. And he said, I want to thank you, sir. And why? Because I'm about to do something bad with my life. I have, I'm having difficulties with my life. And when you smile at me, it seems like God smiled at me. And it's a good day to live my life today. Uh -huh. You see, what a smile can do to someone, you will never know. You will never know. When you give your smile to a person, that will change the person's life, right? We will never know. Now, what is the point? When we're happy, you know, you must show it. Again, you will never know what your smile can do to a person. Now, it is a common knowledge that laughter is the best medicine. And why is that? Why is that? Because if you're feeling down and you're feeling stressed out, you don't want to be around with unhappy people, right? You don't want to be around with negative people, right? You want to be around with happy people, with positive people, so that it can change your life as well, so that you could be happy as well. You could be positive in life as well. Now, according to healthguide.org, you know, it says laughter strengthens your immune system. It boosts mood, diminishes pain, and protects you from the damaging effects of stress. And then nothing works faster to bring your mind and body back into balance than a good laugh. You know, humor lightens your burdens. And it also inspires hope. And it connects you to other people, right? And it keeps you grounded, focused, and alert. And it also helps you release anger. And they say, one study showed, it, for, it helps you to forgive sooner when you are happy when you always smile. So remember that God is a happy God, right? I have shown you that God is a happy God, that God is happiness. Therefore, God knows how to smile. You know that? The Bible says, Psalm 119, verse 135, smile on me, your servant. Teach me the right way to live. When we are living in accordance to God's decree in the right way, God is smiling at us. I know that God was smiling on David because David was a man after God's own heart, right? In Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 25, the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. If you're going to read Numbers chapter 6, beginning from verse 1 down to verse 22, it is about the Nazarite vow, okay? It talks about the Nazarite vow, a special vow for any willing man or woman, a vow of dedication to the Lord. 
as a Nazarite and what they need to observe. Everything is there. Now, going to verse 25, God will smile on them when they follow all that is in that decree. Okay, in that command of God. Now, he is smiling at us. By principle, if we obey God, God is smiling at you. Just like God smiled at David for following the right way. Now, question. Did Jesus ever laugh or smile? Did Jesus ever laugh? Did Jesus ever smile? You know, that's the question I was longing to find an answer when I was a kid, when I was starting. You know, most often, Christians are portrayed, you know, long face, serious. Sorry. I'm sorry. It means right. Okay. <clears throat> so straight face individual, serious, you know. The facial expressions, no emotions, all right. Now, you cannot even tell they are already telling jokes. Right? Now, Jesus is no exemption. Jesus is no exemption. Tradition portrayed Jesus, you know, all, all the paintings of Jesus Christ, all the photos. No, no, no photos or no painting of his depicts his smiling. No photos, no pictures, no paintings depicts that he is happy. None. He is portrayed as a long face, straight face person. Right? But you know, I want you to take a look at this and picture Jesus while delivering his famous Beatitudes. All right? I want you to, to picture out Jesus teaching the Beatitudes. Now, let's go in Matthew chapter 5, 3, 4, and 5. Now, can you picture Jesus, you know, teaching Beatitudes like this? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Happy are the poor in spirit. For there is the kingdom of heaven. Or, blessed are those, sorry, blessed are those who mourn. Happy are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Can you imagine Jesus Christ delivering that famous Sermon on the Mount, doing like that? Blessed are the meek. You know, happy are the meek. Now, now going to verse 12, going to verse 12, this is what I like. Can you imagine Jesus Christ saying this to the people? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Because great is your reward in heaven. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine Jesus Christ telling the Beatitudes like that? Or, oh, go back, go back, go back. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, 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 wait. There you go. Or, is he doing like this? You know, smiling. Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right? He is smiling. He is happy. Right? And when he goes to verse 12, you know, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For theirs is the kingdom. Or because great is your reward in heaven. Now, can you imagine Jesus Christ smiling? Right? But people portrayed him serious. Don't know how to smile. Now, look at this. Look at this. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. You know, he would be smiling. Okay? He would be smiling. This is a picture perfect example of Jesus having a great time and smiling at the kids. You now, Jesus carried them one by one, carried them one by one, and he blessed them one by one. Now, let me tell you this. What child wants to be around with someone looking grumpy, looking glum, you know, a straight-faced person? I bet your children don't want to be with them, right? Jesus, you know, was a kid magnet, so to speak. He loves children, and children love him. 
because he has this aura, right? A happy person, smiling person, a good guy image, not a straight face, no expression kind of guy, right? So, you know, learn to smile, learn to laugh. It will definitely make you a happy person in the Lord. Now, finally, I love the singing a while ago. I love the singing. We love to sing. That is the first thing that people um, would see if you're a member of the Church of Christ. Members of the Church of Christ, they love to sing. You agree? You agree? Yeah, we love to sing. So sing. The Lord said, let us sing. Is anyone among you trouble? Let them pray. Is any, anyone happy? Let them, let them sing songs of praise. Then I will praise God's name with singing, and I will honor him with thanksgiving, Psalm 69, verse 3. If we are happy, then we must sing praises to God. We sing, we praise God as a sign of our gratitude to him for all that he did, you know, and we do our praise to him with a happy heart, and one way of doing it is by singing. So whenever we sing, we declare our happiness to everybody because God is good and God is happiness. So whenever we congregate like this right now, we sing, right? We sing. But the question is, do we sing just because it is just part of the worship, just fill in the time? Or, you know, because there's someone leading the song? Or are we singing because we are happy, because we are grateful to God? And have this wonderful opportunity to praise Him and worship Him. Can I encourage you, my dear brothers and sisters? Don't sing. Don't sing for the sake of singing. Again, I will repeat. Don't sing for the sake of singing. Sing because you are joyful. Sing because you have a grateful heart to the Lord. All right? Brothers and sisters, the paper that you have with you, okay, the paper that you wrote something on, it will be a reminder for all of us to start the day perfectly with God. And that is by praying to God. If you are already doing that, hallelujah. If not, then let that be a reminder for all of us to start the day perfectly right with God. Now next week, Lord's will, we will continue our happy series. Now someone asked me, Brother Mike, how many series are there? I don't know. <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> now happiness is a choice. Choose to be happy with God. And at the end, where can you go but to the Lord, right? Now why wait if you, if you can come to the Lord right now? Let his atoning blood wash your sins away and journey on with a brand new life with Jesus Christ. Now, don't let it be tomorrow, my dear brothers and sisters and friends. Especially those who have not yet accepted the Lord, don't let it be tomorrow, for tomorrow may never come. May I encourage you, if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, come forward and be redeemed by the blood of Christ. Have yourself be immersed and wash your sins away. If anybody here wants to be prayed upon, come forward and we will pray for you. God is waiting for you while the door is open for you. Shall we stand as we sing the song of invitation? God bless everyone.